<laughs> What's up, broskies? My name is Marco Dupa. And with me, as always, it's the great and powerful. It's Adam Obesius Rodriguez. Yeah, buddy. Tonight's brew is from Edmonds Ost Brewing Company. God, I love it. Uh, it's the Lord Proprietor's Mild. And Obi's going to have a little bit more about that for you guys after the break. What's on tap for tonight? First and foremost, we got to talk about the ballooning budgets for these Marvel movies. I know that the conversation has been about the budget of Hollywood movies and what the heck is going on. Mm -hmm. But this one, I think, may take the cake. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Marvel... Studios, Captain Marvel, or I'm sorry, The, the Marvels. Marvels, sequel to Captain Marvel. Mm -hmm. uh, it's coming out soon, and we're going to talk about that budget. Uh, what else? Uh, we also have Mortal Kombat 1, which released to glowing reviews, except for one element. And that's Megan Fox's Nitara voice acting. It's apparently not very good. Mm. So we're going to talk about that. Mm -hmm. And then, while we're on the topic of video games... If you guys are in the know, you will know that Microsoft had their emails hacked or just leaked? It was a leak. Mm. Yeah. And it was some pretty explosive stuff that uh, Phil was saying in these emails. And just the company at large, the uh, direction that they wanted to head in, their plans, things of that nature. Not good for Microsoft. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to get into all of that. Probably just that, <laughs> if I'm being honest with you guys. Uh, so before we can do all that, we got to open this show the right way. This is episode 406 of the One Beer In podcast. bit of a hard pour um, because there's not a lot of head retention with a English style bitter so I see and that is a little lesson for you guys out there wow look at that see look at that head's already gone yeah no uh, no head retention on that that's what your mom said anyway uh <laughs> this is the one Baron podcast the podcast where two brews crack open a brew and we see where that one brew takes us so, like as I said, the Lord Proprietor Mild. Obi, you want to tell the people about what we're drinking tonight? I would love to. This is Lord Proprietor's Mild. And there is no cold read on the can, but as I often do, went to edmundsost.com for the full details. Uh, this beer is an attempt to blend something uniquely Charleston with something uniquely English, infusing black tea from Charleston Tea Garden, America's only tea farm, into a traditional English style mild. We have married the surprisingly complimentary flavors of tea and roasted barley. Notes of tea, coffee, cocoa, and caramel meld seamlessly into this quintessential session ale. It is a brown ale slash English dark mild ale. Um, it's from the series apparently called Around Less Often. <laughs> and it comes in at a 3.5% ABV mm. product of Charleston, South Carolina. All right. There you go. Let's clink it up. Hey ah. Ah. Um, I kind of feel like, uh, how, how are you doing? You know? I feel like we don't open the show... With a little check in on us. Yeah, anymore. yeah, we haven't. We've been kind of rushing straight to the the we, news. We just get right into it. Yeah, yeah, which is usually pretty good. Um, but no, I've, I've I, I'm all right. I'm yeah. all right. Been a little stressed lately. Yeah. But uh, you know, I'm trying to uh, broaden my um, horizons, my horizons, my interests, my uh, recreational activities. As you saw, mm. uh, not you guys, but as he saw, mm. I'm renting a uh, tenor sax. 
which I haven't played since <coughs> middle school. Um, and I will be taking lessons. So, you know, trying That's to find cool. new things to do. Yeah. Uh, you know, get back to the gym a bit. Just went today. Feel good. Feel good about it. Nice, nice. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm just trying to uh, to deal <laughs> with life. <laughs> I think I think we're all just trying to deal. Get by. We're all just trying. Get to by, deal. my friend. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. How about you? Um, haven't rented a saxophone but yet. Yet, yeah. I uh, I tried to go to. I tried to sign up for the gym, and everything in my body was like, "Don't pay for this." <laughs> It's not worth it. Yeah, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. So I think, um, I think I'm gonna try to clean up the garage mm, and mm-hmm. just keep working out on my own. That's the best thing you can do because there, it's so much. Like the the barrier for entry going to the gym. I think the highest like uh, hurdle you have to jump is literally getting your clothes on and driving yourself there. Yeah, yeah. Because if you can just like those of you fortunate enough to own a house in this economy mm. um if you're looking to get fit i highly recommend you dedicate a room to a gym yeah or a garage yeah. you know like it's just it's so infinitely easier yeah to do yeah and and it's just like i don't know i haven't been to a gym in in a couple of years not that you could tell. <laughs> it's from all those kegs you're lifting oh you see that mm-hmm Oh, yeah. You see the guns here. These are the arms of an intercontinental champion here. Is that Igor? Is Igor. that Igor? <laughs> Who's... What, what frame of like reference? Like from Frankenstein? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah. All right. That was a pitch perfect... Randy Savage. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Pitch perfect. Pitch perfect, of course. Yeah. yeah. We'll show you some YouTube videos. Listen, Don't worry. listen, listen. I have quite a few mediocre impressions. I have yeah. a handful of good impressions. Mm-hmm. And that Randy Savage is one of them. Okay? It's good, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a good one. <laughs> Your Trump was getting there, too. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I stopped yeah. working on that only because he's just not really in the zeitgeist He's been out of right the picture now, for a bit, yeah. If he if he gets into the public like the the real public picture yeah when the elections come around I'll start working on it again bring it back you know anyway so yeah I I uh, I have I have been doing the same thing they're trying to trying to you know just do little things to try to stay you know with it yeah I guess engaged right yeah I've been listening to more music which obviously is not really like a big surprise for anybody who knows me but like listening to it in the like um, like I was, I went out and got a basketball because there's a there's nice. a uh, there's a there's a um, a rim. It's like this piece of shit yeah. rim, and and it's I so I live in like a neighborhood where there's a bunch of townhouses. Mm. I'm 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 telling you this as if you don't know. Sure. For them. For them, yeah. When you come out of the neighborhood, there's another one a block over, and it's like residential homes and stuff, mm. and. They they have some like piece of shit court that they don't maintain at all. Yeah. But it's two rims that are still standing for now. So I was like, let me, yeah, I might pop over there. So I went to Target and got a basketball. It's such a weird thing to be in my thirties, and I'm like, I'm gonna go buy a basketball. <laughs> I've done the same. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, but and like, a football. You know, yeah. it's fun to throw around. It's nice. Yeah. You know, I didn't realize how expensive those things are. Dude, tell me about it's it. It's crazy, bro. I bought. Uh, a twenty-five dollar Spalding. I was looking for a regulation size ball. Yeah, yeah. So I bought this Spalding. It was twenty-five bucks, but like they had, like I get a nice quote-unquote basketball yeah. for like sixty dollars. Who's buying a sixty-dollar? Well, I know who's buying it, but the people who take this seriously. Sure, sure. Yeah, They're, those are like true regulation balls, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Nice. <laughs> true regulation balls. She just couldn't help herself. <laughs> True regulation balls. Unbelievable. <laughs> but uh yeah, no, the uh the like the real ass like leather NFL balls. Yeah. Balls. The the leather balls <laughs> uh are like a hundred bucks. Yeah. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. Crazy. They're getting their nuts off. Yeah. All right. 
Well, that's I think good. We checked in. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> Don't have to do that for a while. Yeah, let's not talk about ourselves Ugh. anymore. With or about ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> no more check ins. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, first and foremost, let's talk about this marvel movie that's coming up next it's the marvel the marvel marvel movie starring brie larson and then two other women who and I the don't marvels know their names. <laughs> brie and the marvels brie and the marvels yeah yeah so the marvels I, I i would say hotly anticipated but i don't think anybody's even really i shouldn't say no one's excited about this movie because that would be speaking for a whole legion of of fans and i'm not going to do that i will say that it obviously doesn't have the same shine that other marvel movies have had and that's probably because of how poorly received phase four has been so far phase four right not phase five phase four who can say who cares i mean that's indicative of how we feel about these movies at this state yeah so so this is this, I feel, is not obviously a last-ditch effort because these movies are made and run by behemoths, goliaths of the yeah. industry. So it's not as if they have one bad movie or even a couple bad movies Excuse me, and um, anything's going to change. You know, sure. They have their plans and they're going to do them. But I will say that like this movie has to be at least close to successful. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. I, I think what's more, um, wor- what would be more worrying for uh, the MCU is that, with especially with all of this stuff going on with the writers' strike mm. and things of that nature, um, the uh, uh, what, are they, what are they called? The digital artists behind the scenes who've been uh, completely ruined mm. <laughs> had their lives taken over by mcu projects over the past five years or so right um they finally unionized apparently yeah i saw that so that's going to be a big deal when it comes to making sure that these artists aren't being abused yeah and that's going to lead to slowdown in production yeah or uh a lot of a lot of people making a lot more money <laughs> yeah which is good um, well, I don't, I don't see this even being that consequential for Marvel because if you, if, if, if they're able to just make better movies, and the thing is, like when these movies come out, for instance, like Quantumania and um, Love and Thunder, when those movies came out, what was one of the first things that people talked about? The visual effects yeah. and how bad they were. Yeah. Right. You pay these guys and girls. And you give them the time to make your movies look good as Mm -hmm. opposed to hitting these arbitrary deadlines. Yeah. That's you're taking that ammunition away from your critics because now you're giving these guys at least now you give them all the time in the world. They still come out with dog shit. Then now now you've got your argument to say, like, listen, we paid you the money. We gave you the time. We gave you your sandwiches. You know, we let you take your breaks and you still delivered dog shit. So now what? Yeah. And then they get fired, and they find somebody else to, to fill in. Mm-hmm. That's the way it should work. Mm-hmm. Uh, it hasn't been working that way because they've been exploited. Right. So, yeah, I mean, I think I am not sure how the production of this, the Marvel's film, went. I hope at least by the time that they got to post-production, they're, you know, the, the writing was on the wall for the studio at large to, hey, let's maybe pump the brakes on forcing these people to miss their kids' birthdays and stuff, you know? Right, right. Um, but that being said, I, after seeing the trailers, the visual effects don't wow me. Right. And I think, I mean, to this film's credit, we haven't seen the whole movie yet. So, you know, trailers oftentimes have sequences that aren't, that aren't fully built out. They're, they're not finished. Um, That's our pizza. Yeah. Oh, wow. Um, make sure they didn't eat it, okay? Hey, listen. They, they, and they delivered it in a timely manner so far, so. Yeah. Let's just say this. Wow, we have you guys. Apparently DoorDash just eats people's food. Sorry, I have a chihuahua. Let me just put her away for a second. 
Sorry. I'm leaving this all in. Yeah, you should. Yeah. Uh, yeah, give me this. According to Sherry, DoorDash, the DoorDash delivery guys, they just eat. They just ate her food one day, or they just didn't deliver. That's. Well, that's, that's oh. Just okay. All right. Oh. I will cut that part out. Thank that's, you. That's just gonna kill people. Yay. You should uh, cut out the audio and just have record yourself going bark. <laughs> <laughs> bark. 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 <clears throat> Dude, I'm not cutting this part out. I hope you know you're on camera. We're no not. Yeah, you are. <laughs> Just completely yeah. stuffing your face. <laughs> oh, oh, so, so good. good. Oh, so good. So good. Oh, oh wow. got garlic knots. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Stop it. Stop being on the it's mic. It's mukbang. <laughs> Ew. I'm no. mm -hmm. It's good. Do you guys want plates? No. Mm -mm. We're not going to eat on the episode. Okay. No. Go ahead. Mmm. Okay. Okay. It's not your fault. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. But yeah, apparently. DoorDash. They've uh they've eaten Sherry's food before, so be wary out there. DoorDash, if you're listening, we'll still take your money. Sponsorship, but I mean this time they did good. Yeah, this time they did they did great. Yeah. They they came in like twenty minutes. I would love a DoorDash sponsorship. Cherry, can you get, hand me a napkin, please? Yeah. So sorry. I feel like we're uh, live streaming. I know. You guys should do a live stream just eating food. I mean, that's what yeah, most of them do. One? Yeah. <laughs> most of them just, just live out. stream eating and and play a video in the background. You know, I do want to. I do like want it. to get the one beer and page off the ground. You know, I had, I had some ideas, and I'll, I'll talk to you later. But okay. All right. We'll talk about it. Don't want to spoil it for the fans. No. So, <clears throat> basically, here's the thing. We're, we're, we're trying to, at this, at this stage of the, these movies, we're trying to understand what possibly could have cost 200. That looks great. That looks really good. Looks better than, than uh, the Marvel <laughs> so far. <laughs> what possibly could cost $270 million, right? 274.8 Thank million you. dollars. Uh, anything you want to add from the article that you pulled up? Well, apparently, it really when you when you break it down to brass tax, brass tax, um, they ended up spending two hundred nineteen point eight million dollars, and according to this Forbes article, that means that they will have to gross at least four hundred thirty nine point six million dollars at the box office to break even. I mean, I think they'll. I, they'll pretty easily do that. Well, a fun fact again from this Forbes article uh, is that apparently the the first uh, Captain Marvel movie made a billion dollars. Yeah. So yeah, you know, but I will say it's not 2019 anymore. That's true. So That's I feel true. like we were much higher when Captain Marvel came out mm. on the MCU. Yeah. And well, and her I, whole presence, like Brie Larson, had a lot of cachet. Sure. Going into that, um, Sam Jackson being in it, a movie set in the '90s, like yeah, the de aging and stuff. Yeah, and there was a lot going into that 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 helped that. Yeah, I will say also, just a friendly reminder that Twitter is not a real place. Yeah, right. And that people's opinions on Twitter, even if you spend a lot of time on Twitter, may uh, skew your idea or vision or reality really yeah. of what people are really going to do the marvels is a movie that when it releases people are just going to go see sure yeah yeah you know i mean i think the the one thing that i'm kind of worried about other than the visual effects and clearly how the visual effects artists were treated behind the scenes um is that i i don't know if brie larson is a big enough name let alone the other two Marvels. <laughs> you I mean, know, like, their names are so big, we don't know them. Both of which, I, and no disrespect to them, I'm, I'm sure they're fine actors, but um, they're both from like more of the TV side of things. So yeah. it's like, it's cool. I, I really do enjoy the fact that they have brought up 
finally the Disney Plus MCU characters from the TV shows yeah. to the silver screen proper. But without a real, like, you know, Steve Rogers in there to, to anchor it down, I don't know how successful it's going to be. Yeah. I'm not saying that because it needs to be a man. I want to be clear about that. Um, I don't know, man. Kind of I'm sounds like that's what you're saying. saying. I'm just saying. Sexist. Mm-hmm. Right, Celine? <laughs> right? Oh, great. That's yeah. that's great. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's, that's I great. love I love we that love she's doing that. that. Yeah. It's yeah, good. It's good. It's good. Uh, but yeah, I don't I don't know if this has enough star power to do what the first Marvels did or the first uh, Captain Marvel movie did. Um, did you watch the uh, the um, Miss Marvel TV show? Yes, I did, and I enjoyed it. I thought it was good. Mm. I thought it was good overall. Um, it started to drag a little bit towards the end and get a bit too kitschy, but it started off really strong. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I, I I enjoy both of the actors from. Uh, let's see, the first one's from Just WandaVision. Pull up their names. God, do I have to do <sighs> everything? I wish you'd do something. <laughs> Other than flap your mouth. Um, all right, let's see. Other than flap your balls. Uh, Iman Vellani is from Ms. Marvel. And Tayona Paris is from... I just said it. WandaVision. WandaVision, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. And, it, you know, funny enough, the director is someone we've praised before, uh, Nia DaCosta. Mm. So... I mean, it should be in good hands. Yeah. I mean, all signs are pointing north, right? It looks yeah. like it's going to be good. Um, Pre-release uh, uh, opinions on it. People like the trailer for the most part. I yep. mean, there's obviously going to be people who... <clears throat> there's some people just don't like Brie Larson. Uh, uh, because she... Um, Is a feminist? Yeah. So they're just not going to... They're just not going <laughs> to like that about her. And um, how vocal she is about her opinion. Yeah. <clears throat> um. So that has it working for uh, working against her, but 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 that is what I mean by Twitter's not a real place, which yeah, is yeah. to say that like all those people who have those kinds of opinions are not the people who are like they weren't going to go see the movie anyway. Nah. I don't think even if Brie Larson was like men rule, women drool. I don't. They <laughs> you know they just wouldn't. They're just not. They're like all right. Well, thanks, Brie Larson. Yeah. Uh, red pilled Brie Larson. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's so based. <laughs> yeah. So, I don't Hashtag know. Hashtag um, base Brie. These these movies, man. You, you see some some movies get made with like a lower budget that look like ten times better than these 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 uh, big big Hollywood blockbusters. And I'm yeah. not just talking about uh, the Marvel movies, but just in general. Yeah, and you're like, where's all that money going? And it can't be going to the. I mean, Brie, excuse me, Brie Larson's probably commanding a pretty hefty paycheck, but from Nissan, especially <laughs> all those commercials. Dude, those commercials are all bad. It's crazy, so bad. Yeah, but I fail to see currently where all that money's going, and it's going to be interesting to see. Like, I, I, I believe that they can they can hit that mark to break even pretty easily. But each subsequent Marvel release that gets thrashed by critics or even given mediocre reviews, yeah. those, those, those numbers are going down, man. Like Ant-Man and the Wasp did crazy numbers too. And then Quantumania. Yeah. I mean, they, the, all these movies do numbers. They're all going to do sure. what they're going to do. But, but will they do enough? No. It's starting to get to the point where I see the tide turning. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, it's not as if, like, you can still do it, right? Barbie cracked the top 20 of, of um, highest grossing movies. And so did uh, the Mario movie. Yeah. Both of those movies came out last year or early part of this year and cracked the, 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 the top 20 of highest grossing movies of all time. So it's not like it can't be done. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Just give people, people are- a reason. Yeah, people are going back to the movies. Yeah, so people want to go to the movies. That's it's. I don't think it's a valid excuse anymore with COVID and all that. No, no, people no, are that, back. Yeah, that's dumb. That's done. 
Yeah, people, people are back. like going to the movie theater. They like pulling out their phones and they like taking funny TikToks of <laughs> yeah. themselves mm-hmm. watching a movie. Can you eat? I can't even. Uh, this is kind of off topic, but kind of on topic. <clears throat> the discourse around the etiquette of being in a movie theater. Oh, and yeah. How some people were arguing that like, hey, I paid the ticket. Who cares? Sure. Like, yeah. Who cares what I do? I want to take a video. And like, like this whatever. is my seat, yeah, bro. I couldn't even. Sometimes I see discourse on Twitter and on TikTok and stuff, and I'm like, we have as a society truly just <laughs> lost the plot. We live in a society. <laughs> Wait, that reminds me, and I need your opinion on this. Okay, have you seen the discourse? Speaking of, have you seen the discourse on the uh, the Taylor Swift uh, movie concert movie? No. Okay, so the Swifties love you. Don't hurt us. <laughs> <clears throat> you know they've been going crazy about this movie coming out. Okay. It, it, it's a, uh, a, a, a theatrical release of the um, Eras tour, so everyone can enjoy it. You know, okay. go to the movie theater, watch it, and you know you don't have to worry about going to the actual concert. Okay, or you know, as most of them probably have done, do both. Um, but you know, they're talking about getting dressed up and like making it a night. Great, awesome, sounds good. But there's been a discourse, a rift within the Swifties, if you will, where some of them amongst the a rifty with the Swifties, <laughs> um, and a lot of the oh shoot, calm down, sorry, it's just Taylor. So, I'm so scared, I'm so scared right now. Um, they can't hurt us no more than these fucking right wing Republicans jumping in our comments can do. No, they don't hurt at all. <clears throat> That's exactly. So what <laughs> do you think? Feel, the Swifties don't scare me. They feel good, um, but. Uh, between them and also a lot of uh, actual employees of these movie theaters, uh, some of them are saying they're going to come and they're going to treat it as a concert experience. They're going to come. They're going to, yeah, they sure are. Um, <laughs> I paid for my seat. Um, they <laughs> are, some of them are saying that they're going to treat it as a concert experience, which means that they're going to sing at the top of their lungs. Oh. They're going to stand up. They're going to wave their arms around and have a great time. Mm. Whereas, Another portion of them are like, no, you're in a movie theater. Like, you sit your ass down and you watch the movie and you enjoy it. You know, and like, so there, there is a rift among the Swifties, and a lot of people who actually work in movie theaters are like, please don't do that. Like, please, please treat it as a movie theater experience. You're in a movie theater, and we're the ones who are going to have to get the complaints from the other theaters around you because you're being too loud. So interesting, you know, I feel like there's an interesting conversation to be had here because I can see it from both sides. I personally, it's a movie theater. Yeah. Chill out. Yeah. You know, I understand like if it's something like Rocky Horror Picture Show yeah. where you're you're supposed to sing along the songs and, and do the things, the rituals within them. It's <clears> fine. <throat> but don't be standing up the entire time. Don't yeah. be screaming the songs at the top of your lungs like you're at a movie or at a concert. Mm. That's it. It's just inappropriate. It's not right. I won't stand. <laughs> it's not right. I won't stand for it. Mm, that's that, just my opinion. That's interesting because a concert film is obviously different than just like a regular. So, all right, here's my here's my immediate feeling on it, and it could change depending on the details. If it's a movie that's mostly concert footage, yeah. I mean, there is still some etiquette there that says like, yeah, don't be standing up screaming at the top of your lungs at the at at, At the screen yeah (laughs) but there is a difference between like i want to be able to hear the dialogue of a movie and you are on your phone or you're not watching it and you're distracting you're talking to somebody else and it's like hey man this is a shared space yeah get the fuck out of here there's a difference between that and a concert film where it's like it's mostly a performance of a massively popular pop star yeah Hmm, that's tough. Because if I went to see it, I guess it would depend on, like, okay, so uh, Fade to Black. Yeah. Uh, Concert concert film slash documentary. documentary, Mm -hmm. uh, When Jay-Z retired. Retired. um, And he was making making, uh, the Black album, right? That's, I'd say it's a fair amount of both concert footage and... Um, a documentary. Yeah. And they cross over a lot. Like, yeah. It cuts to the concert and then into the making of the song. Yeah. And 
I know that the album came out while Fade to Black was still having its theatrical run, but I'm I'm like 85% sure that the concert came out, the movie came out, and the album hadn't come out yet. So you were getting a sneak preview of songs that you hadn't heard yet. Hmm. I think. Don't quote me on that. Quote me, though. Okay. But I'm pretty sure that that's how that went, right? <clears throat> so, and I, being a massive Jay-Z fan and a massive fan of just the artistic process, I would be sitting in, in my theater going, shut the fuck up. It's Rick <laughs> Rubin's talking about. like, it's, So, yeah. Yeah. But if it's mostly concert footage interspliced with, you know, her... I feel like I already, I already sound shitty, but I'm like, what is she going to say that's interesting in between? <clears throat> She's got opinions, okay? I'm sure she does. Yeah. But the thing is, the, <clears throat> excuse me, the thing about somebody like Taylor Swift is she has to continuously think about how she is perceived in the world, right? Yeah. So her opinions, everything that she says and does is calculated, mm-hmm. you know? So, and it has to be because she is watched 24-7. Yeah. Everything that comes out of her mouth, every move that she makes, everything that she wears, oh, everything that she eats. Yeah, Beyonce too. Right. Somebody on that upper echelon of pop star is just like on another planet right. than everyone else. So they have to be <clears throat> especially aware and careful about how they present. <clears throat> God damn it. <laughs> I don't know if it's this, this fucking yeah. English style bitter. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's probably the garlic knot. That's probably, probably. what it was. They have to be especially careful and aware of how they present themselves to the world. Yeah. Right? Um, so, I guess as a Swifty, whatever comes out of her mouth, you're going to be interested in. This is a long-winded way of, let's just bring it back to the concert footage and theater etiquette. I'm on the fence. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because I feel like, considering the movie theater staff and the other movies around you, sure. Yeah. <clears throat> but a concert movie that is made up of some of the most popular songs in the world, it's kind of hard to tell people not to sing. Yeah. But you should have some kind of decorum. You should have decorum when leaving your house, okay? Sure. If you're going to a theater, I mean, I'm sorry, if you're going to a concert, there is a strict thing of... These are the rules, right? You get here, you can kind of do whatever you want, but the the rules are the rules, depending yeah. on what kind of music you're listening to, depending on where you're at, what the venue, all that stuff, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Same thing with the theater. There is decorum that people are not following anymore. So we're at a place where, I don't know, sounds like it's going to be a fucking disaster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it would be different if it was like a midnight release or something, you know, where you can just not worry about other guests, <laughs> but it's not. No. Uh, yeah. But I don't know. We'll see. Good yeah. luck to him. Good luck. God bless. Yeah. Yeah. But <laughs> for the Marvels, <clears throat> I personally Marvels. think they're going to have trouble making money on this movie. Yeah. But. You know who's not having trouble making money is the video game industry right now. Mm. Fucking doing numbers. Baldur's Gate yeah. and Starfield mm-hmm. and this DLC pack with... Uh, um, um, Idris Elba. Yeah. For... for uh, Cyberpunk. Uh, thank you. And uh, another video game that's come out this year to rave reviews and probably going to do very well financially is the new Mortal Kombat game. Yeah. Mortal Kombat 1. It's a soft reboot of the series. Mm-hmm kind of puts you in a position where they can kind of do whatever they want. Do you saw the trailer with Batista? Yeah. So fucking cool. Of course. Cool. So cool. Mortal Kombat! <laughs> I love the... It's one of the only times that I would tolerate a slowed down orchestral version of, of a song. <laughs> yeah. Because you know? it was just so fucking cool yeah, yeah. In, in, in that trailer. They did it right. They mm-hmm. did it right on that one. So, um, it's, it's, it's doing well right now. Except for two things. The Nintendo Switch <laughs> version of it, which... Uh, Looks hilarious. Yeah. We didn't talk about it at the top of the show, but we can maybe get into bef- after we get into this other stuff. And uh, obviously the number two thing is uh, Megan Fox's voiceover performance yeah. in the game. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I'll let you take it away. You have more details. Obesius? Uh, sure. So... Yeah, there was a uh, trailer just before the release of Mortal Kombat 1 that uh, revealed that 
not only was a fan favorite character from, I think, I want to say Mortal Kombat 3. Don't quote me on that. Um, Naitara was going to be part of the game, which a lot of people were kind of speculating would happen. But lo and behold, she's there. There she is. And then they reveal that she's voiced by none other than Megan Fox. So that got some buzz. That got some people interested in like, wow, like this is like, you know. Big budget. Yeah, this is this is, means something. Like yeah. they're putting money behind the uh, actors and stuff. <sighs> Lo and behold, the game comes out and uh, people are starting to notice in the story mode, and even in just like the uh, the pre-fight banter between characters, seems a little phoned in. Yeah, it's, a, it's not quite ringing right. It feels a little stilted. Um, doesn't seem right for the character. And then it's revealed that Megan Fox only voiced some of, like, the, the actual, like, dialogue, but didn't stick around to do, like, the other, like, gr- literal grunt work <laughs> yeah. for the voiceover and, like, doing the hi and, you know, uh Interesting. Yeah. And so there's another voice actress who stepped in to do that for her. Wow. Which led a lot of people to kind of go, why don't you just pick a voice actor then? If, yeah. if she was going to... First of all, phone it in from for all intents and purposes. I mean, maybe she tried her best. I don't know. But phone it in and not even stick around to voice the entire character. Like, it seems like she did the bare minimum here. And that's kind of lame, you yeah. know? Yeah. So I think this was supposed to be like a, a, a feather in their cap, but ended up kind of biting them in the butt a bit. Mm. Megan Fox is not a good actress. I'm, I, <laughs> I was waiting for you to say that. <laughs> she's just not. So for uh, NetherRealm Studios to have tapped her to be a part of the cast is already disappointing because it's they they, they were going for star power and not yeah. talent. Mm, yeah. Because she's, she's not a good actress. She's never been good. I don't think she's good in anything she's ever done. She is... I mean, ungodly beautiful, and I think she's decent in New Girl. I think she does. Oh right, yeah. She's okay, but she's not. I mean, there's just there's so many other guest starring actresses on that show who are like love interests who who just blow her out of the water. I'm looking at you, Lizzie Kaplan. <laughs> love you. <laughs> she, I don't. I don't even understand the casting from the jump. Yeah. I, is she like a big fan of Mortal Kombat? It doesn't seem like it, um, but I don't know. Maybe. And the other thing I'll say is, coming from a person who sat down and obsessively watched <laughs> the previous game story mode, mm. it was really, really well acted. Yeah, you know the voice acting in in the in the uh, in the cutscenes and everything um, was really well done. Yeah, and the pre-fight. Uh, Ramble mm-hmm. is like really <clears throat> an entertaining part of the game, yeah. and if that comes off phony or phoned in, like takes you out of the whole thing. Like yeah. the, the, the best thing about those like pre-fight things is that they're so convincing, mm-hmm. and like um, it's cool that they interact with the person that they're fighting yeah. with. I always love that. that in fighting games. Oh, it's great when yeah. they, when they acknowledge who they're fighting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great. Uh, so that's tough, man. Yeah, that's tough. I, I mean, I know it's like it seems like a small thing, but you're right. Like, I think people, especially people who haven't played the latest three Mortal Kombat games, kind of look at the storyline and are like, you know, who cares? It's it's a fighting game, mm. but it, they really like they are known for the story now, like mm-hmm. the story mode now. <clears throat> So, and for all intents and purposes, based on reviews that I've read, um, that continues with Mortal Kombat 1. People really enjoy the storyline. It's it's done really well. The, yeah. You know, the graphics are better than ever. Acting but, is great. Well, and if you don't understand that the story mode is very important to the game now, you won't really understand why it's called Mortal Kombat 1. Why it's mm-hmm. even a reboot in the first place. Like, none of that will make sense to you yeah. if you don't understand the fact that, like, there's a heavy focus on the storyline. Yeah. Yeah. So, but no, to your point, because everyone else is is uh, really dialed in, I think it 
probably makes her stand out more. Yeah. Unfortunately. And I think this was just bad casting. And yeah, I mean, for me personally, I would rather them have a talented voice actor who is used to doing this kind of thing instead of, you know, a A or B list star. Yeah. 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 Personally. Absolutely. Absolutely. There is, and I, you kind of alluded to it at the top of the show, but being a voice actor and just being a, an, an actor, those are two different. Why, why do you think there is a legion of voice actors? Sure. I mean, you can be good at both. Yeah. But, <laughs> you know. But there, but there is a there is a difference. Yeah. Like, yeah. there are people who are so good at voice acting and probably couldn't be good actors and vice versa. And, yep. and again, yeah, you can be both. But the one thing that you don't want to do is, is, is plug in somebody who is is not good at either yeah <laughs> and Megan Fox or, is clearly not good at either at very least not not really invested in this project you know and 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 that's just an insult to the fans it's an insult to the game and it, and and listen I don't know I don't know obviously Megan Fox's uh mind state going into recording these lines maybe she didn't phone it in maybe she gave it her best yeah maybe she tried just, yeah but didn't read well. I don't know. I just feel like she's not a good actress. So, yeah. well, you haven't seen Jennifer's Body. I so. have seen Jennifer's Body. <laughs> you don't think I watched Jennifer's Body, brother? Come on. She's good in that. She's not good in that. She is for what it is. You know, like she plays the role. She's well. not good in that. She plays. The, okay, sure, I'll give you that. She plays the role well. Yeah. She does her job. Okay. She does her job. Listen, there's there's a million other actresses who who are as sexy and more talented than Megan Fox. Lizzie Kaplan. <laughs> <laughs> She's not going to date you. I know, but maybe she could. <clears throat> Emmy Rossum. Know. She's not <laughs> sexy, Emmy but Rossum. she's a better actress. I mean, let me... Okay, she is sexy. I'm saying like... like Outwardly, her her uh, persona, her Hollywood persona, mm. is not that of like being a sex sexy. bomb, right? Yeah, she, I think she's sexy as hell. But I'm just saying, like, Megan Fox's her uh, image is that she's sexy. You know, same with Angelina Jolie. Sure, but Angelina Jolie is a tremendous actress, right? So, right, there's right, differences. Right. You know, there's yeah. levels to this shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Megan yeah, Fox yeah. is not. You know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Machine Gun Machine Kelly, Gun too. Kelly. What about, uh, like, yeah, he's... I don't even don't get into yeah. it. Don't <laughs> don't engage. Don't engage. <sighs> yeah, so, I don't know. It, 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 uh, hope, hopefully just, like, one dull moment in an otherwise very, very well done. Seems to be the case. And I think that a lot of people are nitpicking because overall the, the larger product is really good yeah so nah. you ever seen the the clips of um Dion waiters in uh nba 2k i think it's 16 or 17 no dude <laughs> legendarily bad yeah uh performance oh wait no i did see i i remember now i mean yeah it's awful like it's 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 comically <laughs> bad that it, it was like it, it's almost a it's almost a an insult to Dion himself that they like just kept those yeah, lines yeah. I bet that they sat in the studio with him for like four hours, and they finally were like, "That's the That's best it. we're gonna That's get." That's all we got. Because how do you not just go? You know what? Let's just pick another Cleveland Cavalier. Yeah. Anybody? Let's grab the team manager. Anyone else can do this. Yeah. Why does it need to be Dion Waiters? It's like it, it. It. It sounds like it's almost a talent at how uncharismatic that voiceover. Is. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, uh, dude, uh, and then. In the game, in the cutscene, like your character starts to talk over him as he's still <laughs> delivering the lines. It's like it is so. It, it's just horrendously uh, bad. I don't think anything's ever going to top that voiceover yeah, performance. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you know, hopefully, Megan Fox is not in that. What about Jake from State Farm? What do you mean? The they had the State Farm guy in in NBA Two K. They did. Yeah. I mean, but he was actually good because he's an actor. But uh, yeah. Oh, I don't. I don't know if I played that one. I stopped playing them around nineteen twenty, cause like that's a long time ago. <laughs> around nineteen twenty, I stopped playing those video games. 
They had no audio back then. They're just not good anymore. Yeah, no. My career just stopped being good. I will say, speaking of 2K, I picked up WWE 2K23. Oh, 23? 24, oh, yeah, 24 comes out on, next uh, year. Yeah, 23 was on sale, right? Yeah. Yeah, I should yeah, have grabbed it, too, yeah. just to have it. It's, it's fun. It's good. What do you, what'd you you grab it on? PlayStation. We should play that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, kids. Let's keep it going. Let's keep this Let's keep this fun train a-rolling. Now yeah. Let's, <laughs> let's get Speaking of some, video games. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we got some, some big revelations that are going to have a rippling effect in the video game industry. Uh, some leaked emails. So, Obi, I'll let you take it away with the details. <sighs> well, I should say I'm pulling from the Wired article. Uh, and this is by Megan. Fox? What? <laughs> <She's a writer. laughs> what? Uh, Mer- Megan Ferro Ferokmanesh Ferokmanesh Megan Ferokmanesh I feel confident in that yeah. if not Sounds I'm confident. sorry Megan um, but yeah so uh, I think to tie it up in a little bow what happened with Microsoft is they had a document leak hmm. which apparently was from a couple years ago I think this was all planned. These were all plans from before the pandemic. So take everything within this with a large grain of salt. Um, But it it kind of mapped out Microsoft's plans for Xbox moving forward over the next four or five years. Mm. Um, That included a new version of the Xbox console itself (laughs) without a disk drive. Extra memory the included. Xbox two. Yeah. <laughs> and um, mm-hmm. uh, a lot about games and even more stuff about the controllers that they're planning on doing something kind of similar to what we have with the DualSense with PlayStation with the haptic feedback. Mm. Um, but yeah, the I Xbox mean. Xbox controllers don't, currently don't have uh, haptic feedback? No. <laughs> No, they don't. Can you imagine playing on an Xbox? <laughs> Silly. Gross. <laughs> Stinky. No haptic feedback? Stinky. <laughs> Listen, I turn haptic feedback off on almost every game. <laughs> I know. You know? I do it. I'll, I'll play for like an hour with it on just to kind of feel what they were going for, and then I turn yeah, it off. Yeah, I, I always play the um, the storylines with it, the campaign, mm, mm, mm. just to get the full like theatrical experience. Yeah. And then I, if I'm ever playing on multiplayer, which is few and far between, I, I'll turn it off. You got to turn it off. Yeah. You yeah. got to. You just got You got to. You got to do it. Um, they're eyeing a new console for 2028 for a next next gen. Um, they wanted to actually buy Nintendo, <laughs> which was that was the biggest thing. Interesting, yeah. yeah. Um, Elder Scrolls Six, as you may imagine, is not coming to PlayStation. Yeah. So those those were kind of the main headlines out of the leak. Um, Phil Spencer, head of Xbox, came out to say how disappointed he was that this happened, uh, but that essentially. To take it all with a grain of salt, because when they're ready to announce things, they're going to announce it. Yeah. Do I think that's him covering his own ass? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you know, again, I think this was plans from years ago, and and obviously things are have already changed from the dates that we see on that document. Yeah. So clearly, things have shifted around. <laughs> um, but it gives us kind of a rare inside look into the. Uh, how the the sausage is made mm. over to Xbox. Um, so yeah, I mean, wh- what do you, what do you think about the revelations that came out from this got, leak? Got a lot of thoughts. Yeah, a lot of thoughts. As a, as a non Xbox gamer. Yeah, yeah. I uh, number one. Yeah, fuck you guys. <laughs> <laughs> number two. Isn't it weird where we are when it comes to this kind of stuff? Like, there's no way <clears throat> to stop this kind of shit. And it feels like in 2023, we should be at a place with proper um, security uh, 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 things in place to stop this kind of stuff from happening. And yet, it, all the time, you, yeah. still, you still get shit like this. And it's like, it sucks because, you know, <clears throat> if you're Phil Spencer, for instance, you know, he, he's got he's to gotta be thinking like, we got a clean house. 
Wait, I, I got to go through every single email I've ever written and make sure that it's not on whatever chain this is that got leaked or who who, who did I send it to who leaked it? Or, or any. And it's just like, right. That, that to me is probably like the shittiest thing. Obviously, when these leaks have happened in the past, they have revealed uh, the motivations, the more nefarious motivations, I should say, behind some of these CEOs and, and, and company leaders that sure. that kind of inf information is good that it came out. We got a better yeah, yeah, perspective yeah. and we we're able to you know, move forward uh, in, in a better way. But when it comes to stuff like this, it's like, I don't know, man. It's just it's like corporate espionage. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And it feels. I mean, I'm not an Xbox gamer, but I don't at this at this point in my life. I just don't have the energy to care about a console war. Yeah, no. and so I just I feel I feel bad for them as a company that like they have to deal with this now. Yeah, and and for context, this came because there was an unredacted document that was part of the uh, the Federal Trade Commission versus Microsoft case, mm. and that was uploaded to a court website. And from the court website, you know, some internet sleuths found it, downloaded it, gotcha, shared it gotcha, on forums, and gotcha. say la vie. Interesting because they wouldn't have even been in this position had they not been trying to buy up the market the way they are. So, not to say that they brought it on themselves, <laughs> they deserve it. <laughs> but that is interesting. Um, because hey, you know. Part of the reason that they're even in this trial is uh, some of their plans. They're not bringing Elder Scrolls to the PlayStation. So it's like, hey, you know what? Yeah. Hey. <laughs> At this, I'm like, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm not a big Elder Scrolls guy, but <clears throat> I do like having the option of playing the game. <laughs> but I want to be able to play it. <laughs> but also, I saw some people on the internet mm -hmm. talking about how, you know, PlayStation gamers always talk shit about how our exclusives are better, and they are. And now they're mad that Elder Scrolls is going to be an exclusive game. But sure. my counter to that is that Elder Scrolls was never just an Xbox game. It was always uh, multi-platform. Multi-platform, yeah. So, Until they bought it up. Right. So that's that's what people are arguing about. It's not the fact that like Xbox has exclusives. It's not like PlayStation gamers are like, when are you bringing Halo to the, you know? It's like, sure. if something was always established as that thing, nobody's upset. Well, I shouldn't say nobody. People are still upset about it. People are always thing. upset. They're always upset you know? about everything. Yeah, yeah. And this is a show about that. <laughs> uh, and then my last thought on it is that Nintendo thing is really, really <laughs> it's interesting. Wild. It's yeah, wild. That's like... Oh, 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 Philly S was like, yo, <laughs> I'm really throwing my balls around. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. thinks he's going to buy Nintendo. And then he was like, they're, he's like, they don't know it yet, but their future is not in hardware. <laughs> it's like, who the fuck are you, bro? Yeah, he's, he's slanging that dick around. For real. Yeah. Uh, swinging. Swinging. So, yeah, those. it's very interesting. It's unfortunate that it happened, but man, oh, man. It's a nice little peek behind the curtain. Yeah. 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 What do you think? I mean, none of it is really surprising to me other than the, the Microsoft trying to, or at least interested in the Nintendo thing. Uh, because as, I, again, on the internet, as I've seen, somebody made a good point and said, that's really rich coming from a company that has sold like way less consoles than Nintendo has yeah. in this era. Um, yeah. so the audacity, yeah, yeah, yeah. The switch is still doing gangbusters and like, you know, the, the Xbox has recovered from the pandemic, but it's still not, it still hasn't done what the switch has done with like way older technology, yeah, <laughs> cheaper technology too at a lower price. I think maybe I'm biased. And so my internet search history is more biased but I just don't see people talking about Xbox hardware the way that they talk about the Switch or the PS5 well, and that's, or that's PCs. In my opinion, at least, it's very has very much to do with the exclusives that we were talking about mm. or the lack thereof. Mm. Um, because a lot of the exclusives that have come out recently, uh, I mean, barring only Starfield, which was super recent, um, they, they kind of come and went. Yeah, or they've been disappointing, or like, 
at very best middling. So, you know, with that track record, it's it's hard to sell consoles yeah. uh, unless you have like a baked in fan base who are just dedicated Xbox gamers. Yeah, and they do. Sure, yeah, oh yeah. I mean, Xbox is fine. Microsoft is even better. They're doing just fine. Don't yeah. don't worry about them. Um, but you know, when it comes to uh, you know headlines, I feel like Xbox is definitely definitely uh, kind of behind compared to PlayStation and even Nintendo at this day and age. Yeah. So you know, I I I genuinely hope that they're able to get the road underneath their feet and the next console changes the game no pun intended um because i like xbox you know like i i was a 360 diehard and um you know i want to see him come back to some prominence i think competition is good for everyone yeah um and i really miss a good halo game yeah so. i will say i think i had the most fun on Xbox 360. Mm-hmm. Maybe it was the era. Maybe it was my age. Maybe it was the games that was coming out. Back in my day. <laughs> but uh, I just feel like I, it, it, you know, my online experience yeah. never surpassed how good it was on the Xbox 360. It's a real sweet spot yeah. of gaming. It just, it just yeah. felt like everything. It felt like every game that I played was like at least good yeah. to great yeah. to amazing cod gears and halo alone like just world shakers yeah. <laughs> of games on xbox yeah so and then like yeah. early i i don't know if it was called the game pass at the time but like early games like state of decay that were oh yeah yeah know, yeah mm-hmm. uh, i fucking love state of decay yeah it was good yeah um and just the Everything about I don't, man, it's kind of hard. It's hard to to take that they've fallen out of such favor. I remember. I mean, we were we were when when uh, the PS four was coming out. We were all like, "What do we do?" Yeah, it was this big discussion <laughs> yeah. about which game, which console are we going to get so we can all play together. Sure. Well, these guys are getting the new Xbox. Yeah, and then it's like, Ooh, oh, I kind of want to get the PlayStation. Yeah. So, uh. and and everything that I was seeing, I was like, I think I'm gonna get the PS4. Yeah, and and the rest is history. I don't think I'll ever get a Microsoft product again. Yeah, at this point, mainly because it's like, listen, if I got 400 bones, 500 bones to drop on something, yeah, that's it. It's the one console sure, that, sure, that sure. I'm gonna have for the life of this of this generation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fair. So, you know. Somebody wants to gift me an Xbox, <laughs> I'll play it. Yeah, it's fine. Um, yeah, yeah. I just I, I hope that they're able to come back into some some form of prominence in the future. I don't care. Uh, but I'm more interested in what's going to happen with the trial because that's going to have reverberating effects on the industry. Like if 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 they block the sale, yeah. Well, or they not the sale, but but the uh, well, no, yeah, the sale because that's what the FCC filing is. They're, they're basically FTC. saying like trade commission. FTC. The FTC, not FCC. Yeah, um, what they're saying is they shouldn't be allowed to buy Bethesda. Yeah, and they were already blocked in the UK. So yeah, I, I think they're you know trying to figure out what to do now. But yeah, so I don't know. It's, it's going to be interesting because yeah. you know we're going to see. It's, it's not like Sony is innocent in any of this. No. They want to buy up as no. much of the marketplace no. as they can. Of course so. not. Anyone who thinks there's a quote good guy in the situation is it's fooling themselves. Listen, there's no good guys in wars. That's why they're called wars. Yeah, no, no. Or or in in corporate uh, espionage. Yeah, Blech. gross and stinky yeah. and yeah. nasty. Yeah, they're all out for us. Yeah. They're all out for our money. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're gonna get it. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Well, now that we can end on a high note. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. Here's what we're gonna do, guys. We are gonna do the cheers of the week because that's how we're gonna end on a high note. Yeah. We're gonna end on positive, positivity, positive, positive, yeah. positive, positive. Yeah. It's now time for cheers of the week. Obi, hit me, babe. Uh, my cheers of the week. Speaking of Microsoft, uh, goes to. PC gaming. <laughs> okay. PC Master Race right here. Okay. 
Cool, 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 cool. Super One cool. of us. Uh, you know, I, I feel like I finally get it. Oh, God. I feel like I finally get You're it. such a piece of shit. <laughs> it took me two days. <laughs> but I finally, I took my, my pre-built PC. I put it into a new case. I'm already sick of this. Uh, I had to, I had to figure out on my own and the internet and with the internet, figure out why my Bluetooth and my Wi-Fi weren't working. Mm. I ripped apart my old PC, ripped it to shreds with my bare hands. And I discovered I left in the little antenna, literally this big folks, this big and taped to my old case, <laughs> taped, taped to it. Uh, this little antenna for both the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi receivers. Mm. The when I when I tell you, the wire for it is that big. Yeah, it's that big. <laughs> you gotta push it in with your your little fingies mm -hmm. <clears throat> into the correct slot on this little tiny card. And I was sweating the entire time. Man, this is getting real sexy. And I find, I got him in. I put in some new RAM. <laughs> you rammed it in? I rammed it in. I closed it up. I plugged it in. And nothing worked. <laughs> <laughs> and I went, why? I realized the RAM was incorrect. The, the wrong kind. Took it out. Everything worked. I now have Wi-Fi. I now have Bluetooth. And I figured it, I, I, I jury-rigged it myself, mm. taped it back up into my new case, and put in a new memory card. I now have four terabytes in that bad boy. <sighs> and I, I got to say, and Sherry will say the same, I'm addicted now. Mm. I love my PC. I love my gaming PC. It is now my rig. It's, it's, it's like others, but this is mine. <laughs> He, she never sees me anymore. Nobody does. And, and this I, is where he's been. I am, I am absolutely addicted to it, and I, I can't wait to continue to work on it because I get it now. I've taken apart my motherboard. I've, you know, taken out my graphics card. I've added more memory, more storage. Like, I get it. I, I've cracked the. It's like, it's like doing the Rubik's cube for, for the first time. You know. Yeah. Like, I, I know. I get it now. It's satisfying. I get it now. Yeah. And I put in a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. Yeah. Scratch my finger all up. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look oh, at that. Scratchies on his fingies. <sighs> but yeah, it's just, it's been nice. And I've been playing Starfield. It's fun. <clears throat> I downloaded a bunch of Xbox games that I haven't played because, as we said, we're, we're PlayStation bros. Mm. And well, we were, anyway. <laughs> No, I don't know what you are now. Console wise, I'm still a PlayStation guy, mm. but I'm saying there's a whole world out there, especially with Steam. Uh, so yeah, it, it's it's PC gaming for me. Okay, all right. It's worth it. It's, it's worth the the stress and yeah. work. Sounds like it. Yeah, sounds like it. Yeah, sounds like it's worth it. All right, my cheers of the week is going to Letterboxed. <clears throat> uh, an app that's been around for a long time but admittedly I only became aware of it very recently because of the memes and stuff Yeah, which is kind of crazy because I have in my mind have wanted something like Letterboxd for years and just never looked to see if there was some kind of resource. <laughs> yeah. I've always wanted a thing to just like click on a movie that I watched, give my little review, and then post it for everybody to see. I've wanted it for years. And just never knew that Letterboxd was a thing. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm late to the game, obviously. Um, and a friend of mine, they were like, I'm in, I, you need to get it. <laughs> How do you not have it? You talk so much shit about movies mm -hmm. and, and you don't have a letterbox. That's insane. Yeah. So I finally downloaded it and like I've been addicted to it. I've just been ripping through. I already rated like 200 movies. I'm trying to <laughs> I'm trying to go back through and give it give 
all of them at least like two or three sentences of my my actual opinion on the movie. Yeah. So I'm going back and just like ripping through all of them. And uh, I hope to, in a couple years, <laughs> try to get to as many movies as I've seen. Like I want, I want it to be an actual database for everything that I've ever seen. Yeah. And uh, that's going to take me a long time. But it's an awesome app. Obviously, I'm not. This is old news to all the people who have been using their letterbox uh, uh, apps for years. But I still think it's fun, especially if you follow this podcast and you're interested in all the shit that we talk about. All these movies, you can look up our letterbox. Do you have one? I'm, you have. One. I have one, but you I, don't really use. I it. haven't used it, and that's because I'm genuinely afraid of becoming addicted to it. Yeah. Because I I've spent some time just like reading through other people's reviews and that's the extent of it because I've been like well that's not right <laughs> yeah, yeah you know and like yeah. let me let me write about this yeah uh, but then I've stopped myself you know but. what's funny I could not care less about how you guys feel about it. <laughs> all I care about is putting my opinion out into the world that's probably why we have a podcast yeah for sure I, I don't give a fuck about you your letter unless you want me to check them out obviously yeah. if we're friends and you want me to check out your letterbox then I obviously will um, but I, I could not care less about like the general public's opinion on some of these movies because all it's going to do is piss me off sure you know especially yeah. if they're wrong which they're wrong often <laughs> So, uh, but it's a fun app. Get it if you don't have it. Um, follow me, Boogie Reviews, all one word, Boogie Reviews. I'm pretty sure I'm just obesious on there. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's, I mean, it's branding. I mean, how can you not, right? Who's going to take obesious? I'm occasionally Lord Obesious when somebody has taken obesious because it has happened. Yeah. Sometimes I like using my government and sometimes I'm like, no, the, the Boogie moniker will suffice. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> We got one more thing to do, and you know what it is. It's mm -hmm. time to review <laughs> these brewskis. So tonight's brew was from the Edmonds Oast Brewing Company. It's the Lord Proprietor's Mild and English Style Ale. And Obi, what did you think, good sir? Um, I really enjoyed it for what it is. I think 3.5 definitely makes it a session, and it is highly drinkable. Yeah. I would personally prefer if it was more at a four and a half maybe a five um but given what they were going for i have to give it high marks mm. because i do taste some of that tea yeah hits you with the tannins a little bit yeah which i enjoy um and yeah it, it has just a light maltiness to it on the tippy top and uh there's not really much else to say about it, which I think is actually a benefit in its favor because I feel like a mild should be mild. Yeah. Um, all that to say, I'm going to give it a four and a half. Yeah. I enjoy it. Not not really my style because if I'm going to have a beer, I want it to be a little heftier. A little heftier, yeah. A little more. A little give, more. Me, give me a little something else. More body. But, you know, if I'm, if I'm having these all day, then it's good. It's yeah. good. It's good. Tastes good. I am going to give it a five. I think that, uh, as you stated, for its style, for what it is, it does its job. Um, making an English style ale with that with that tea, that black tea, yeah, that tea coming through mm -hmm. is a is a big thing um, because we talk on this show often about balance. And also about if you are advertising something, if you are saying like this is a mango IPA, and then you drink it and it's and it tastes like grapefruit because it's just all hops and sure. juice, like like it just doesn't nothing's coming through. Then that you're gonna get docked points on this show. Yeah. For this, I feel like they kind of nailed everything that they were going for, and so uh, for that alone, I have to give it a five. I do agree with you though. This is not something that I would usually drink. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, I mean, it's, it's highly drinkable. Yeah. But as far as its style is concerned, it's like, um, does it surpass anything that would make me give it a perfect score no matter the style? No. Yeah. But it does what it's supposed to do mm -hmm. uh, for what it is. So five for me. You think we got it? I know we got it. Well, if Obi says we got it, then that's it for this. 
This has been the One Beer In Podcast for myself, Marco Dupa, for Adam Obesius Rodriguez. Yeah, boy. Thank you guys for listening. Drink delicious beer and have yourself a beautiful evening. We love you.